Hi everybody, it's a time to sew with Regina. I forgot my little sign, I made a poster at my shop, but we're actually going to film there again. Um, I'm gonna take you there tonight. We're gonna do a little interval at my shop. Just a quick run through, the place is so small, it's okay. So anyway, the last show, I showed how to sew on a button, and I also had this necklace on, excuse me, Emma, remember I dropped it and I forgot to tell you what this was for it's actually a thread cutter okay it has a little razor inside these little slits so all those slits will cut your thread okay so that's what that was about and someone online uh, on YouTube they made a lot of comments and um, they knew what it was anyway so it's no secret um, Dritz makes it I don't know if they still sell it, but I'm sure if you go to Amazon, Amazon has everything. Okay, so we're gonna thread a button again. And this time, I am not going to use the threader. I am just going to thread a button, a, a needle to sew on a button. <laughs> I do that a lot. I say thread when I'm supposed to be saying machine, whatever. But these are thread braids, and someone asked me how I made this. Well, I don't make these. You buy them like this, and they sell them at Joann's, and if Joann's doesn't have them, this is a really old one, very tattered looking. This one's newer. I think I got it at a tag sale or something. But it has all these different colors in it, so you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of spools if you're just sewing on a button for your husband or something, you know? So anyway, we're gonna sew on a button. So. I did explain last time the big needles and the uh, leather needles that's a wedged foot. This one's kind of bent, but uh, you'll see it's all wedged at the bottom. And Emma's here filming this show for me again. And we got lots of response on YouTube. I'm very pleased. This is a very small hole. I want a good size hole. Let me see what I got. Oh, here we go. I need my glasses. I don't know why I try to look without them. Uh, they're kind of small too, but I will deal with it. Okay, so we want two threads to sew on a button because then we fold it in half and we do four threads, okay? So I wanna take out two and you just pull and you get the color you wanted. I picked like a coppery color. Okay, and I did make my outfit. I did not make this shawl. It's actually a shawl, but I wear it like a piece of jewelry and I tend to like it. I have all this stuff out here to show you tonight. You're gonna have fun watching this show. It's a little, oh, I have a nice big one right here. I'm gonna use this one. Okay, I didn't explain in the last show that you really shouldn't wet the thread. Everybody tends to put it in their mouth and wet it. Not good. It actually makes the thread swell. So I cut them, I hold it in my left hand, and I put the needle down on the thread rather than trying to go like this. Well, first of all, even a young person, you can't focus that well on threading it this way. It's so much easier to just hold it in your hand and put the needle right down on the thread. Easy, easy. And remember, you can also use the threader that we used in the last show, okay? All right, so now it's in two. Yeah, it's all crinkly and everything, it's okay. Because we're going to use the thread heaven, which I explained the last time, because the other thing you can use is beeswax, which is an old one. And my thread heaven is, I hope, someplace. I hope I didn't forget it. That happens a lot. I meant to take it and I don't see it. But, mm, it's missing. It's always in here. And I thought I grabbed it. I don't see it. So I don't have thread heaven, but I recommend it highly. It keeps your uh, thread from tangling. Okay, so now I, put a knot in it, and I probably should have showed that a little bit better, but uh, I'll do it again. I'll do it up here. Okay, so we're just doing one slip. I'll cut this off. 
we're just doing one slip okay take it one slip like you're starting your sneakers okay your shoelaces cut it very close but not so close that it's going to fall apart about 1 16th to 1 8th away from your knot you want a little tail not a huge tail but a little tail okay now you have to look at your shirt and see which way they sewed the button on and let's see do it on this piece of fabric here they could be sewing it that way that way maybe they do an x this was a student that did that one so it's very different than what i do very unique actually i kind of like it but anyway we put the button on the fabric and we come from the back and well actually you can bring your needle up first and put your button on it okay then you want to pull it through now you need to put your needle in and before you pull it through the whole needle through you want to check the back and make sure you are very close to that knot and you're not way far away because you could be okay so we pull it through and then you want to go to the back go right next to the knot not through the knot you'll break it okay that's two stitches right there make sure you're in the same spot always i i missed it turn over and look at what you're doing okay then we cross over to the next set of holes i'm a little nervous <laughs> uh where are we okay better to look on the back actually okay and now i'm through the next set of holes and we're going to do two stitches here always turn it over and look at where you're at you could be way far away and not realize it and that's why a lot of people make big mistakes okay okay one more stitch and I am done. Always look before you pull it all the way through. If you pulled it all the way through, you're gonna start all over and you're way over there, you know? I used to say uh, way around the corner or down the street, the next block, because you could be far, far away. All right, so now we're at the back. We did our four stitches. We go through the middle, catching those threads and a little piece of the fabric also, okay? Now you have a loop here before you close that thread, you want to go through the loop and make one slip, your first slip on your sneakers. Now you need to do it again and go through the threads in the middle. It pulls it all together and makes it nice and looking neat. Go through the loop again, okay? And you are done, okay? All right, it got a little tangled there, so I have a little more loops than normal. All you do is find the thread that uh, didn't go through properly and pull it, and that'll work. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so now I'm pretty neat. I could even knot it again, make it look even better. Okay, I don't like the way it looks. It's just me. I'm a perfectionist, if you haven't noticed. I hope you enjoyed the last show. Um, we're hoping to film two shows tonight. Um, they're only 20-minute shows um, because I hear that uh, a lot of people don't pay attention for very long. And I don't blame you. It's a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff in the world. So there we are. We're sewn on. And that's pretty much it for the button. I don't think there... Let me check my notes. Things I didn't show at the last show. I showed you the thimbles, I showed you, oh, the shank. Somebody wanted a clarification on the shank button, how to thread it, you know, how to do it with thread. I particularly don't use my elevator, which is right here. I don't really use this too much. I did in the beginning when I first bought it, I thought it was a hit, but you know what? Half the time I couldn't find it. Now I keep it in a certain box, so I do find it. But um, I didn't use it that much, so. A lot of my equipment I don't use that much, but it's nice to have, you know? And again, took my glasses off, sorry. Okay, and um, someone commented about how I wear a face mask. And to tell you the truth, um, I never got vaccinated 
for personal reasons. And um, I make all my masks. So I have every mask to match my outfit. Now I used to make them a lot larger. Now I make them smaller, they're more fitted to my face. And I like them out of fabric because I don't believe that the ones they that are disposable, they may have chemicals in them and something you shouldn't be breathing. So I don't recommend those. The reason I wear it is because I have dentures and I tend to spit a lot. You can actually hear my spit sometimes. But anyway, um, so I tend to wear it when I'm close to people. I put it up when I go to talk to somebody. And the other reason I wear it is I really don't want other people to hear this, but I'll tell you. I have to shave every day, and sometimes I forget to shave. Also, I wear those dentures. If I took my dentures out already and I'm running to the store, I put on a mask. I don't have to put in my teeth, okay? You can't tell if I don't have teeth in or not. I do have them in tonight. Okay, the other reason, it covers my turkey neck. If you notice in the last show, I wore a turtleneck also. I wear turtlenecks, okay, because of my turkey neck. When you're older, you'll understand. Okay, so that's why I wear a mask. Okay, what are we doing? Shank button. Okay, so say you got a really thick coat. I wanted a big button, but I don't see one in here. Oh, this is a decent size. Okay, so we want to keep it away from the fabric because if it's flat to the fabric, it's just going to pop off, okay? So what I do is go through the back, go up to the hole, do my first stitch, okay? Look at the back, I'm way far away, I need to be closer, okay? Then, my first stitch, I hold it up with this hand, okay? I got it about a quarter of an inch away. Still go next to the knot, I'm holding it up. Okay, see that? I'm holding the button up. I have a long piece of thread there, see it? Okay. Okay, here's my second stitch. Before I pull it through, I look. I always flip over. I'm very flippant when I do buttons, okay? I actually flip it all day long, but we won't go there. Okay, I let go of it for a second because I'm doing my second row. I need my fingers to be different. I hope she can see me. You know, this is a big problem because I don't think Emma knows how to sew very well. <laughs> that what she needs to see you know what i'm saying all right so i'm doing my second my first stitch now i need to do my second stitch okay and we have four stitches i'm so sorry it's just difficult for me to be with the camera when we're on the sewing machine it's much easier to tell you the truth my hand's not in the way you know things like that okay so i did my four stitches and I am away from the fabric. Can you see that? That I'm away from the fabric. All right. Now, you take your thread and go into the center. Do not go through one of the holes. All right? Bring it out to the side. And then you take your thread and you wrap it. Okay? And that keeps it up and away from the fabric. Do you see how the other buttons are flat to the fabric? This one is up. I could even put it higher, but most of the time you only need it like a quarter of an inch up, okay? And then you can knot it here or you can go through the back. I usually go back to the back and do my knot there, okay? Now, I'm getting a little short here and my needle is a very long needle. I'm gonna try and do this, but it might get bad. And if it does, I'll show you the way you do it without taking it all apart. Okay, so I'm put my needle in and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the loop. I have a big needle here. Uh, I think I'll be able to grab it, okay? It's a stretch, all right? I'm through the loop. There's my one slip. If you feel you can't do the next slip, you cut it, okay? Split your threads in two. Two and two, they don't have to be the same two. And make your knot this way, okay? So I'm gonna do a slip and that's it. I already have my other slip and I didn't 
and grab it right. <laughs> I'm so far away because I'm pulling it to the knee, to the to the screen. Oh boy, I got so much to show you tonight. I hope I get through it all. We're gonna do zippers. We're gonna do elastic. I'm gonna teach you how to thread the machine. I can't do this right now. I'm, I'm all threads. I'm very nervous. But that's how you would end it. But anyway, that's a shank. I hope that explains it. If you want more explanation, just uh, get to my email, which is Regina Time to Sew at yahoo.com. Okay? And I discussed with you leather needles. The wedge on the needle needs to go through the leather. And this is a thread cutter. I went through that. That was things I didn't show at the last show. And I used to give away from my business little sewing kits. This is from a long time ago. No area code on there. That's a long time ago. I've been in business for over 45 years on February 6th. That's my anniversary date. Okay, guys, we're going to move on. This is my tool bag. And the three tools I need, I have little things I'd love to show you. These are little clippers. They cut so close. They actually use these in hospitals, but they brought them out to sewers. They cut like butter and really close to the garment. Good thing to have. Always have a tweezers. This is a pointer. It takes out the point when you're getting the edge of a pillow or the point of a collar, it pokes it out, okay? Don't do it too hard, you'll poke it right out. Uh, I do have a toothbrush in here, but that's, you know what all that is. I wanted to show you this. Um, these are my good scissors. These are my paper scissors. Always have one for each, okay? These are arthritic scissors for people who have trouble with big scissors like this, okay? And they do have them for left-handed or right-handed. I don't think there's a left and right for this one. I think you can easily do it, but maybe the, the no, I think it would be the same, but I don't know, you can call me on that one, okay? But every time you're cutting, you need to have the bottom blade on the table. Bottom blade always on the table, and you just saw along. Very important. If you cut any kind of pattern in, uh, in the air, it won't come out right, okay? This has a lock on it. And they do have uh, smaller arthritic scissors. I think we have a pair right here, I think. No, I don't know where. I, oh, here they are. These are smaller arthritic scissors. This was the first ones they came out with, okay? And much easier when you have arthritis in your fingers. Okay. All right, we're gonna move on to the sewing machine. I think that's all you, what you've been waiting for. And when I do my sewing machine, I need these three items at all times. I need a pair of scissors or clippers, whichever one I choose. I like the scissors because a lot of times I'm doing a facing or a waistband and I need to clip down the seam, trim it down. I need these kind of scissors rather than a clipper that won't trim anything. My ruler is a very special ruler because it's for a carpenter. It's a very exact ruler. It is the best ruler and my ruler and I've used it for 45 years. It's accurate. A lot of these um, cheap rulers that you get, uh, I don't know if we have any here. I usually have them in these boxes, but there's none here. Um, they're not as accurate. So I really like this ruler, okay? So if I don't have these three items here, I really can't get to sewing. I just can't. But we're gonna thread the machine. Emma, if you would come on this side. On, at Makehaven, it's all numbers. One is right here, two, uh, three is down here, four, five. So it's easier to thread. Now, you should look at your manual as to how to thread your machine because you always need to know. We also have these charts on the table to thread it, to thread the bobbin, to change the needle. 
um, all instructions for the machine, okay? But you won't have that at home. If you don't have a manual for your machine, let's say you bought it at a flea market or something, um, you need to um, get that manual. And you just go online, go to Singer or wh whoever makes the machine, and tell them the model you have. And I think you can just download it and print it, or, or you can order one and have it sent to you. Either way, okay? The thread. I like polyester cotton thread, but this is a 100% polyester. I can guarantee it. I can feel it. I can feel polyester from a mile away. The outfit I'm wearing is polyester also. My, they're called Slinky Knits, and they have lines in them. I didn't make this shirt underneath, but I want to show you something because not only did I make this outfit, but I make the slip that goes underneath. I make the whole outfit, okay? The turtleneck, which I love, had a hole in it right in the middle. So what did I do? I put an applique on it. I still get to wear that shirt. I wear a blazer with it or something, okay? And underneath this shirt, I made my undershirt. I'm not gonna pull it up too high um, because I don't wear bras. I just wear t-shirts. And this one I made myself. It's out of slip fabric and it's nice and tight, okay? So I just wanted to show you those two things that I do make everything I wear, just about. And a lot of times I make the earrings I wear. I didn't make this pair, but the pair I had on earlier today, I did make, okay? I, I wear clip earrings, so they're easier to make than uh, pierced earrings. Okay, let's get back to the machine. The thread should always come from the back when you place it on the machine, okay? Now, if your machine is a machine where the thread lays down, you want to make sure where the thread comes out from the manufacturer, which they have this little slit here, and that's where you get the thread out, okay, to start it. Make sure that that's laying on this side of the machine, if it's laying down. Because when it's unraveling, it could get caught on that, and you'd have a problem. This machine, it's standing up, so I can put it either way. But I want the thread to come from the back, not from the front. Okay, so from the back. That's why there's only a hole on this side. Because, whoa, I lost it. Hey, that should happen. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me get my thread. Ah, I'm not supposed to make mistakes. Okay. All right, the thread comes from the back. And notice I only, I only have a hole right there. And what happened? It's not coming from the back. What happened? I, I wound it wrong. Let's see, where are we? Yes, I wound it wrong. All right, let me cut some of this off. All right, and, and I throw the threads on the floor, and when I'm finished with my project, I pick them all up later. Don't waste your time picking up threads. You're gonna get tired and bored with it, okay? All right, so the thread comes from the back, so I only have that one hole. This is a hook right here, number one. Number two is another hook. This is for your bobbin. And I'll show you that a little bit later. This is for the tension of your foot. If I undo it, I don't think I can right now, it'll pop up and that means there's no tension and your fabric will move all over the place. Oh, there it goes, all right? That means there's no tension here. You can't sew with that up like that. And a lot of times I come to this machine and it's up, I said, how did that person sew? So anyway, that has to be down. You would only use that if you were working on like a chiffon or a fabric that just needed your guidance, okay? All right, now we go down to number three, okay? Right here. Four is that little lever that's in the tension. Four is this hook up here. Three is the tension down there. Four is this hook. Five is another hook. Six is another hook. Seven is on this side. There are two hooks here, and that's in case you have double needle. Then you would have use both, and you'd have them coming from here. But same thing. They go through the same, but at the needle, they separate into the two needles, okay? And the two hooks right here before the needle. Because these are all guides to 
get your thread to go through the, this, the, the machine. Now, if you missed a hook, especially this hook that goes up and down, it won't sew properly, okay? It just won't. You're not in the hook, it won't sew, okay? So make sure you're hooked. Make sure you know how to uh, thread your machine, by the way. All right, again, I'm not gonna wet it. I'm just gonna cut it and put it in the needle. All right, I know my fingers are in the way. They do have a thread contraption here that helps you thread it quicker. To tell you the truth, it takes you longer to get this down and all that. Oh my God, what you gotta go through to have it go in. There are some other machines that suck the thread. That's a good thing also. Okay, now we have to get our bobbin in there. I don't know what's in there now. Um, they empty the bobbin and they put the case back in. I don't know why they just don't leave it threaded here at May Cayman, but they don't. Okay, the bobbin. The thread goes over the top, facing you. You drop it into the case, okay? There's a little slit here. The thread's gotta go through the slit. Are you getting this, Emma? Then to the middle. The thread lays over that hole, and that hole is on the top, okay? Now, I'm gonna tilt the machine a little bit because I want you to show them this little notch. That's where this lever goes. The lever I'm holding is to hold it, but that goes in that little hole, okay? So, oops, you gotta hold it. All right, I gotta do this again, no problem. You need to see it three or four times, so. Over the top, facing you, drop it down, bring it over, and lay it over the top. Make sure it clicks in. You hear that little click? Right before I open my big mouth. Okay, so now I'm gonna get it in that little slit. Hard to see on the camera now because this is way over it, okay? Now, we need to get that bobbin thread up to the top. All you do is hold your top thread, turn the wheel forward, clockwise. Do not push it the other way. You always push it forward. Only if you're in a really serious jam do you turn it the other way. We put the needle down and we take the whole step, bring it all the way up. Now take this and pull your loop up. Do you see that big loop there, Emma? Yeah. That's what we're gonna pull. She's gonna learn how to sew just filming this. Um, that's when we pull this loop, okay? Now we put both threads through the front of the foot to the back. Pull them. If something, if they aren't pulling consecutively, something is wrong. You threaded it wrong, something is too tight, you need to check it before you start sewing. But they're pulling nicely. You need to close your lid, and this goes back on. This is a free arm for when you're doing a sleeve, a small sleeve, or um, uh, pants, and you need to go around in a circle. But most of the time, you should be able to do anything with this on. This also has a compartment that keeps things in there. We don't keep too much in there because we have all these little things that keep a lot of stuff in there. Okay? But this goes on the machine. Yeah, all right. There we go. All right. Remember, I like these three things with me at all times. Okay. Really? Wow, we don't have too much time left in the show. So, the next show, oh my God, I talk too much or something. I have so much to do. I'm going to have to do two or three or four more shows rather than just two more. But anyway, your machine is threaded. Someone asked me about the foot and how do you press it. Well, first of all, I have to put some fabric in there, but we'll get to that in the next show. And then I'll show you what all these symbols are about and your dials and your stitch length and blah, blah, blah. So we'll see you at the next show. 